Hey guys, today we are going to be learning about color schemes. Um, you should have in front of you a worksheet that looks like this, and this is where you're going to take your notes over the different color schemes. But you'll also notice on the right hand column there are miniature color wheels. What I would like for you to do is to color in on these color wheels. You'll see some examples in the slideshow. Um, so for example, analogous color scheme are colors next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, you might color in green, blues, and purples. You might color in those three colors using the colored pencils at your desk. So as I, as I talk through the slideshow, I want you to take a few notes and then color in on the color wheel. So let's get started. And I know that up here, these are a few things we've already talked about. So I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Um, and then we'll start talking more about our color schemes. Okay, so here we go. So as we've mentioned before, color has three dimensions or qualities. We have the hue, value, and intensity. We know hue is the name that is given to a color such as red, yellow, and violet. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. So for example, the hue is red. We add white and we get the tint, which is pink. Shade, you, got, you have your hue, which is red, you add black, and you get burgundy or maroon. And of course that can be for any hue, which will make that color darker. Intensity is the brightness or dullness of a color, and we saw this on our painted color wheel when we did yellow and violet. So you have fuchsia, which is very high intensity, or maybe a, a very bright yellow is high intensity. Olive is low intensity, not as bright. Here are your neutrals, such as white, black, gray, and beige, and these are great to use along with your colors that you use in a room. So let's go ahead and start talking about different color schemes. So there's certain groups of colors that work well together which are called color schemes. Make sure when you're using color schemes to select colors that you like. And there are some basic color schemes that have worked well with each other for many years. So we have our primary colors, which are pure and basic. All other colors are created using these primary colors. They're equal distance from each other on the color wheel, and they cannot be made from any other colors. Secondary colors, when we combine two primary colors, we get a secondary color, such as orange, green, or violet. And these are found directly in between the two primary colors. Tertiary colors are made by mixing equal amounts of adjoining primary and secondary colors. So here we have our first color scheme that we're going to talk about, which is monochromatic. Mono meaning one, chromatic color, so one color. So it's a color scheme using one color and tints, tones, and shades of that color. So on your color wheels next to monochromatic on your sheet, you can color in one of the triangles. So for example, you can color in blue or you can color in green or just pick one color and that will represent how it's one color. Now, you're going to use, when you're doing a monochromatic color scheme in a room, you're going to use neutrals along with that one color as you can see in this example. The monochromatic color is blues, and you can see some light blues, you can see some darker blues, but you also see some neutrals. Here's another example of a blue monochromatic color scheme, and a few others as well. Then we have analogous, and that is a color scheme that uses colors next to each other on the color wheel. So for example, blue, blue-green, green, yellow-green, and yellow. And it may just be two colors next to each other, or three colors, but in this case we have five. And you can see that displayed here in this example picture. And it even says, note that even though these are very bright hues of five colors next to each other, they are analogous even if they are bright. So they can even be a tint or tints of colors, so pinks and, you know, light, light, um, yellow or whatever, but it's still 
you know, a value of that color and is still considered analogous if they're next to each other on the color wheel. Here's a, an analogous color scheme using red, orange, and yellow. And a few others as well. The next one is complementary color scheme, and that is a color scheme that uses colors opposite each other on the color wheel. So, for example, red is directly across from green, so it has to literally be right across from it on the color wheel. You might have violet and yellow. You might do blue and orange. So they are right, right across from each other on the color wheel. So you can see these are both complementary color schemes, and they're both using red and green, but you'll notice this, these are more shades of red and green, okay? These are higher intensity values of um, red and green. Here's an example of yellow and violet color scheme. And a few more examples as well. Double complementary is a color scheme that uses two sets of complementary colors. So, for example, we have red and green and violet and yellow. It's pretty easy to see in this picture below. You can see the yellow and violet and then the red and the green. Right here, it's seen more in a plaid, you know, style of bedding. Then we have split complementary, and this is a color scheme that uses one color and the colors on either side of its complement. So the complement of red is green, but notice that's not shaded in. But the colors on either side of green are blue green and yellow green. Now you'll see more pinks in this bedspread, but remember pink is, you know, a, an intensity, a uh, shade, I don't know, shade or tint of probably more of a tint of red, a brighter tint, brighter intensity tint of red. Okay, then you have the, gr the yellow green and you have a blue green. Here are a few more examples. See if you can figure out what the three colors are being used on each of these rooms that makes them split complementary. The next one we have is triad, and these, this is a color scheme that uses three colors equal distance from each other on the color wheel. So for example, red, yellow, and blue. Pretty common in um, like children's, you know, rooms or decor, but you might also have violet, green, and orange, or might have some tertiary, three tertiary colors that are equal distance from each other on the color wheel, but as long as they're equal distance from each other on the color wheel, that would be considered triad. Here's one using secondary triad colors. Violet, yellow, and green. Or I guess it would be more of an orange. That should be an orange, but it looks like they've got more of a yellow. But And then a few examples for those as well. You can see red, yellow, and blue here. Here's your secondary triad right here. This one's kind of in between the colors, but it looks like they are, would be colors in between, or three colors equal distance from each other on the color wheel. Probably like orange, green, and blue-ish, blue-green. Then we have neutral, which is a color scheme that uses whites, blacks, grays, and beiges. And next we have accented neutral color schemes. So you have a neutral color scheme, and then you have pops of one color. So for example, right here you have pops of yellow, pops of orange, or pops of red. It's predominantly a neutral color scheme but you, like I said, you just see pops of that one color. 
and that's what makes it X into neutral. Next we have warm colors, and these are colors on the warm side of the spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, and yellow-green. And then we have cool colors, and these are colors that are on the cool side of the spectrum, like blue, violet, green. All right, so now let me tell you what you will be doing next. So you should be getting a worksheet that says creating color schemes and on there you will notice there are four rooms that all look the same but in the left hand column it tells you the color scheme so for example com complementary color okay an example would be red and green okay so what you will first do is on the front table there's a bucket of paint samples you're gonna go pick out your paint samples that you would use in this room it doesn't necessarily mean they would have to go on the wall it's just colors that you would be using for that room. So if you wanted to do red and green, or if you wanted to do violet and yellow, you'd pick those two colors, and you're going to cut out swatches, cut out, you know, you don't need a huge piece, just a sort of small piece, not too small, but glue them right here. Then you're going to color the picture to reflect a complementary color scheme. Now remember, you don't need every single thing in there to be red and green. And I want this to look kind of like it's a photograph of a room in that color scheme. So notice there's wood floors. You might have a brown floor or a gray floor. You might have neutral color walls. That's totally fine. But when I look at this picture, somehow I need to be able to tell that is a complementary color scheme room. You'll do it again for split complementary. Now this is three different colors because you have your color and the two colors on either side of its complement. So you'll paste your three paint swatches, and then you'll color, okay, neatly. Scroll down here. We have analogous and triadic. So go ahead and glue your paint swatches onto the page. But on these two, it does have some questions. So what feeling or mood do the colors give the room? Go ahead and answer that question. But again, you're going to color it for that particular color scheme. Same with triadic. And when you're done, again, you will have paint swatches for every single room, and every single room will be colored completely. That is it. Have a great day.